Hello! In this video, you will learn about SCA display projects, and I will give you a brief overview of the tool user interface. We will create together a specification and know more about SCA display primitives, attributes, and properties. A SCA display project contains a set of graphical specifications, or graphical objects. A graphical specification is associated to the default graphical resources of a project, like color, line width, line stipple, font, and texture tables. A specification contains a set of layers. A layer includes a set of graphical primitives and graphical objects. In this video, we will start using the tool with a simple example, a cockpit display. Go to the primitives area and select a rectangle. Put your rectangle in your drawing area and position it precisely using the position attribute. Here I will center it on screen with the height of half a window. I'm using the blue color to represent the sky. I will do the same to represent the earth. I instantiate a new rectangle, apply the position settings. Here we could also use the grid and snap to grid features. This is very helpful for aligning objects on precise values without the need to adjust values manually in the properties tab as we did for the first rectangle. Then use the brown color for the ground. Primitives are native SCA display objects. They can be line-based primitives, surface-based primitives like arcs, ellipses, rectangles, arbitrary shapes, text-based primitives to display a simple stream of characters, formatted numbers, text boxes, or text with decoration, or bitmaps primitives. The dynamic behavior of graphical primitives is controlled by variables plugged to their geometric parameters. When the value of a variable changes, the geometric parameter is updated accordingly. There are two types of parameters. Attributes, which are common to most of the symbology objects, such as the fill and outline color, line style, and font. And properties, which are object-specific parameters. Let's now create a text box. I narrow it to only have one character per line. And I will call it sky and make it green. I will do the same for Earth. I adapt the text box again and change its name. Let's make a pause here to give more details on the colors we've been using. Each color is actually an index associated to an RGBA value specified in a color table. This allows managing all colors in one single space, simplifying late color adjustments, runtime palette changes to make a difference between day and night, for example, and the use of color table in different displays with a different color rendering. For the line width, it's the same principle. Each line width is an index associated to a name, line width, a halo, and a color width, all defined in a line width table. These tables are all available in the Project tab. In this tab, you will also find the textures. So let's apply a texture to create the sky and earth rectangles to make them look more realistic. Go to the texture table, click on the plus sign to add a new one. Here I will add default ones for the sky and the earth. The texture table allows managing all textures in one single place, similar to the color or line table. You can then associate the texture table to different displays. It supports runtime texture modifications which allows dynamic displays layouts. Let's add the sky and earth textures in the table. You can also stretch your texture by clicking on the repeat area. Then apply the sky and earth textures to the corresponding rectangles. Then go to primitives and select a line. Draw it and right click to stop your line. Then place it according to your needs and apply the color you want. I will set the white color here, then change the width. Then replicate this line using the Control plus R shortcut. In our case, I want three upper lines with a 50 user units difference between each of them. Here we go. Select your line again and do the same to have the lines below. Then make the central line wider. 
and thicker. You can now select all the lines and group them together in a container called Scale. You can group the two rectangles and the scale into a container called ADI Background. The objects on top of the structure tree are drawn first. Objects below in the tree are painted over them. This is called the painter algorithm. If you drag and drop objects below or above others in the structure tree, you change their drawing order. In the next video, we will continue designing our cockpit display. Thank you.